finally arrived. It's been a long time coming. Five years, and I am finally on the Viva in the sanctuary. <laughs> That's why they had to bring out three senior rabbis to witness this moment. And also here's this, uh, you know, in Pirkei Avot, it teaches us to treat no one lightly, think nothing is useless, for everyone has their moment and everything has its place. Over the last two years, we have been challenged with moments that no other people in time have been faced with. And we took those challenges head on to seize our moments as a community. I would like to take a moment and give gratitude to our search committee that led the charge to find and hire Rabbi Schulman Fry. If the members of that committee that are in attendance would please rise and be recognized. <laughs> our community as we write our next chapter of the God Ariel. And to everybody in attendance tonight, thank you for being here to share in the vision, share in the moments that lie ahead of us, to seize it and continue to grow our community forward. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Rabbi Deborah Shulman Fry who is the head of school at Valley Beth Shalom Day School. And she is also the mother of these three, two, three, <laughs> wonderful young men, and the spouse to our own Rabbi Shulman Fry. Please, Rabbi Shulman Fry. Hey everyone, we're really proud and excited to be here tonight. So I'm just gonna beg your indulgence for a brief moment of rabbinic and um, motherly privilege here. So I have uh, some special guests with remarks that didn't make it onto the program. So come on up, special guests. Apparently, we're 
an incubation lab for future stand-up comedians, <laughs> which we all know rabbis are simply failed uh, stand-up comedians. <laughs> <laughs> tonight marks a new beginning. In a ritual of our own creation tonight, acknowledging the matching or choosing between a rabbi and a congregation. And this is indeed a new beginning for both. So tonight, let's celebrate with the poetry of the first book of Torah, Reishit. Genesis is a book about origins of the universe, of the world, humankind, the people of Israel. And one could also say that it's the origin of God's self. And as much as it is a description of creation, it's also a document of faith. It contains the many stories of the people of Israel. What is the beginning? Tonight we have the clergy of Zat Ariel, a tradition of nearly 80 years. Rabbi Rothblum, Rabbi Bernard, Cantor Aronoff, and their families here to celebrate the solid foundation they created and upheld in partnership with all of you, with all of us, the congregation. Sometimes beginnings signal an ending, and other times, instead of being a self-contained point of origin, it can be a continuation of ourselves, of our organization, rebirthed, renewed a point on the spectrum of who we are and who we become, an actualization. As our story unfolds together, we will each add chapters in punctuation, legend, and fact. I'll start us off, help us understand how we arrived at this very hour, this very moment, and I can't wait to see how our stories merge and emerge. And I'm delighted that we're just getting started together. So indulge me as together we have the story of creation, of the merging of the dots, R-E-L, with Rabbi Brian Children Fry. This is truly a unique and new Bereshit. In the beginning, a baby is born in Queens. <laughs> overjoyed parents and older sister. His world was created, but not yet fully formed. And neither was he. He was new, curious, and friendly. Public school, sometimes he got in trouble, but was always a good friend and devoted son, and always, always very bright. He attended synagogue, where his dad was the president, and family was involved. There was morning, there was evening, a first day, and it was good. <laughs> he worked at summer camps, most important at haagen <laughs> applied to college, and was off to a new adventure at Washington University in St. Louis, at Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And there, he learned about academic Judaism and Jewish history. He was inspired by this new angle of his Judaism, the intellectual pursuit. He befriended rabbis. He drank scotch. <laughs> there was morning, there was evening, a next day, and it was good. And the boy, now a man, wondered what was next. Off to New York, the Jewish Theological Seminary, to Jerusalem, Mahon Schechter, and a year we don't always talk about the Black Hat Jerusalem Yeshiva. He was forming. He devoted himself to his studies. He committed to his smile and to a presence of welcoming. In New York, he volunteered his time with elderly shut-ins to visit with them, people who never left home and who often, in a full week's time, saw no one else in the world but him. He ventured to Los Angeles in the summer to intern at Beit Shuba, the world's only Jewish 12-step residency, to learn about addiction, to dispel myths, to develop empathy, 
and to understand that the Jewish community is not free from crisis or brokenness. He learned to counsel, to pastor, and much to his mother's chagrin. In those many hours of one-on-one -on -one counseling, he learned a lot of swear words. <laughs> there was morning, there was evening, a third day, and it was good. He felt ready, he was forming, and again, he left New York. He started anew this time in Los Angeles at Sinai Temple with the best colleagues. He learned in real time homiletics, simchas, how to partner, and truly build a religious school of integrity and fun. He made friends at the Board of Rabbis, and his rabbi friends set him up on a date with a rabbinic student. She was a bit of a spark plug, and he liked her anyway. He proposed, she said yes. There was morning, there was evening, a fourth day, and it was good. Another new beginning, becoming a father, first to a son, and soon after that to another son. The wide world called to him. The family of four moved to Miami, and they left soon after as a family of five. Yes, a blessing. Another son. <laughs> Back to Los Angeles, to the hidden away gem of Rancho Palos Verdes. Beautiful Bima partnership with Cantors, a spirited Havara, and the rejuvenation of congregational programs and creation of new. If you watched the congregation grow, He watched the congregation grow in creativity, community, and strength. And he watched his boys grow. There was morning, there was evening, a fifth day, and it was good. Life unfolded, the boys grew older, a new opportunity arose to be part of a chain of tradition. Sharsheret HaKabalah of esteemed and kind rabbis in the San Fernando Valley. And we find ourselves here, after morning, in the evening, a sixth day. And it was very good. It was very good because he wanted to serve here and because the congregation supported and joined in one voice to select him. It was very good because the partnership and tradition of an active lay leadership together with hard-working professionals felt inspired and ready for him. And as in creation, Yom Hashishi, what is next is bliss, joy, a partnership of heaven and earth, a palace in time, the Sabbath, a time of celebration, ritual, and beauty a rabbi and congregation, one rabbi amongst many in this beautiful chain, after each day in creation. Someone once remarked to me that out of all of his qualities, what's most effective and memorable about Brian is his goodness. So added to our gracious narrative, not only will this be very good, Brian, too, will be good, and he will be known to be good. An American revolutionary remarked that reputation is what others think of us, and character is what God and the angels know of us. The virtue of goodness is something that you have inherited from your parents and you share with your sister who's unable to be here but is streaming tonight. And in your eyes, Brian, goodness is more than a value to uphold. It is the way to live. I see this goodness in each of our sons and the way they treat each other most of the time. <laughs> 
and the people in their lives with kindness and integrity, even at such a young ages. And I want to mention your name, Brian Howard. You are named for your father's mother. In Hebrew, it is Baruch, or blessing. Brian, you are a true blessing to all of us. Your parents knew in holding you in their hands. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you do the Verizon app? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Brian, why don't you come up here? So I imagine that your parents knew when they held you in their arms that you would be a blessing to many. And with the wisdom, Baruch Hillel, of a great rabbi, Hillel, and of course, the blessing of goodness, because there is no finer blessing. What is a beginning? Sometimes it means the end of something else, and other times it's continuation of ourselves, rebirthed, renewed, a point on the spectrum of who we are and who we become. On this night of your installation, I reiterate your name, Baruch Hillel, our blessing, our wisdom. May the blessing of our rabbi continue to share goodness in this sacred journey together, and let us all say, Amen. Would you like to say? 
I'm not sure what was the bigger revelation that I have the bald spot or that Eric DeCastro knows where the Bima is. <laughs> It's funny. Thank you. I feel very honored and humbled to stand before you as your newly installed senior rabbi. I want to just reiterate the gratitude that was expressed to the search committee um, for all of their incredible hard work, all in the face of a global pandemic. And in particular, uh, I would like to thank Jill Lasker and Lena LeBeau, the chairs of that. synagogue is never possible without strong partnership between the professional staff and the lay leaders. And our community is served by an active board, passionately and capably led by Lena LeBeau. All of the leaders for the board share a love for this community that inspires their dedication and the tireless pursuit of running our synagogue. And the board is wise to know that a synagogue functions best when it allows its professionals to do their jobs. It's a little seed plant there. <laughs> I am overwhelmingly blessed to work with such a talented professional staff led by Ori, Julie, Mandy, and Shelby, and the teachers in our incredible ECC. <laughs> Patrick Miller and his crew for keeping up our facility. <laughs> the rabbi with the best accent ever, Rabbi Jessica Yarkin. <laughs> our director of education, Julia Levine. Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina Broughton, who I recently brought here, most recently from Congregation near Tommy, but we brought her aboard. Marina and Natalia will carefully manage our resources. And the ever colorful administrative staff of Jess Beaver, Andrea Jaffe, and Herschel Bleefeld, all adding their enthusiasm and creativity to their department. The clergy office, and I know I feel safe speaking on behalf of Rabbi Yarkin and Cantor Aronoff, is fortunate, truly fortunate, to have Deborah Peterkovsky keeping us all organized with confidence and care. I so appreciate my partnership with the ultra dedicated and deeply reverent Cantor Judy Dubin Aronoff. Judy is my partner on the Bima, and the super creative Eric DeCastro, with whom I love reimagining and thinking of bold new ways to build our community, is my partner in the day to day. What I so appreciate about our professional staff is that each of them, in their unique way, couple their dedication to our community with creativity and flair. It's truly an honor to come to work with each of them every day. They are blessings for us all. Speaking of blessings, 
all of you who came here, some of you shared with me in the courtyard that this is the first time you've been in campus, on campus in over two years. It's been a tough time, but you're here, and your presence means a great deal. Thank you so much for sharing this special day. I fully recognize that I stand on the shoulders of the rabbis who came before me. Not literally, Jonathan, that would be a little weird. Okay. Aaron Wise, Yichono Livracha, Moshe Rothblum, and Jonathan Bernhard. Their success assured the well-being of this synagogue. The leadership that they provided and the community that they nurtured are eternal blessings. We are the beneficiaries of their sacred work. Because of them and the work that so many lay leaders accomplished, many of whom are present tonight, we stand poised to realize a very bright future. The rabbi that I am today is largely informed by the wonderful communities I had the opportunity to serve previously, including my beloved congregation, Nair Tamid of the South Bay. I feel very fortunate to have been blessed with trust and support from that community for the past eight years. I started out as an assistant rabbi at Sinai Temple in Los Angeles, but I began my Jewish journey as a child at Temple Sinai on Long Island. Following high school, my father, Mel, was eager to leave Judaism and the yeshiva world of the Lower East Side behind, and for good reason. A few years later, he met and ultimately married my mother, who as an unaffiliated Jew from Borough Park, never had a day of religious training in her entire life. Despite their respective distance from Judaism, together they made the somewhat unlikely decision to raise my sister and I as committed members of the Jewish community. I remain forever grateful for this. And of course, I'm also grateful for their support as I later went on my own Jewish journey, leading me to ultimately to the rabbinate. My parents, Mel and Alda, are here today, along with my in-laws, Maris and Harvey Bach, who are streaming the service from Milwaukee. We feel enormous love from our parents. We'll meet them later, so this is how you remember, Mel and Harvey. My mother's name is Alda, so if she married Alan Alda, her name would have been Alda Alda. <laughs> and my mother-in-law, Maris, well, if she had married Roger Maris, her name would have been Maris Maris. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Today, I am grateful, deeply grateful, for my family. To my children, Heschel, Lev, and Jesse, the three of you are so very different. But what you have in common are engaging minds, deep, penetrating feelings, and an enormous Arts, all of which are gifts from your mother. <laughs> your mother, who is without a doubt the most passionate, deeply feeling, and caring person I have ever met.
it's not easy for two rabbis with big jobs to share a home. But Deborah, I feel blessed to build our home together. While our most precious resource, time, is often severely limited, you, Deborah, challenge me to live more aware, more intentionally, more fully, and more lovingly. From the moment we met until now, I remain in awe of your determination to succeed, your passion for causes beyond your own self-interest, and the creative, deeply creative ways you engage the world. I love you. Those of you who know Deborah know that she's a little bit more serious than I am, but she lets me be me. One example, on Passover, at the Seder, we have a unique Shulden Fry family custom surrounding the Afi Komen. Instead of simply breaking the middle of the three sheets of matzah, I hold up the middle matzah like a wooden karate board, and one of the kids breaks it with a chop. <laughs> it's a silly ritual, but that's what makes it memorable. Of course, after the breaking and hiding, there is the finding and returning of the Afi Komen. As we know, after it's broken, hidden, and then found, the jagged edged pieces of Afi Komen Mansa are brought back to the table. By returning what had been broken away, by reintroducing what had been lost, as the final act in our Seder celebration, we are committing ourselves as agents of restoration. <clears throat> it's what our tradition calls tikkun. And tonight, on this incredible evening, I would like to offer this ritual of return and restoration as a metaphor for how I would like to serve you as your senior rabbi of this sacred community. There are two interpretations for what the returning of the Avi Coleman symbolizes that I'd like to concentrate on tonight. The first and most commonly understood interpretation is that the three matzot are about community, representative of our ancestral identities, Cohen, Levi, Israel. Towards the beginning of the Seder, when the Afi Komen is broken, it represents a fracture in our capacity to connect with one another. But at the end of the evening, when the Afi Komen is returned, we are reunited in relationship with one another and stand together as a people. The second understanding of the Afi Kome is a less well-known spiritual orientation, interpret the spiritually oriented interpretation. According to this understanding, the lower matzah represents the earthly realm. The upper matzah represents the heavenly realm. And the middle matzah represents us people who struggle to find balance between earthly concerns and spiritual pursuits. When the middle matzah is broken, our spiritual equilibrium is thrown into a state of, a state of chaos. But when the Afi Komen is brought back to the table, we as humans are symbolically made whole again. And once again, through us, the physical can be channeled upwards and transformed into the spiritual. 
I see my service to this community as an act in the spirit of these two understandings of the return of the Afi Komen. We live in a time of radical disconnection and loneliness. We spend more time looking into the light of our screens than into the lights of our souls. We spend endless hours communicating, but precious little time connecting. Of course, this reality has only been exacerbated by the pandemic. But the restoration of the middle matza reminds us that those who feel disconnection can reconnect. Those who feel lost and cut off from community can be welcomed in. Together, let us build a dot REL with that goal in mind. Like the uneven shards of Api Komen that are pieced together to form a whole, let us strive to connect all of the pieces of our people as one. Because here, in our synagogue, we can all, each and every one of us, be who we are jagged pieces and all. And here, in this sacred space, each of us has a place as part of the whole. With this understanding of the Api Komen, let us strive to make a dot Ariel, a place where all Jews can come together for connection and companionship, where each person can be who they are, and where each one of us can feel a part of something greater than any one of us. As for the spiritual understanding of the Aki Komen and its role in our community mission, like the broken matzo, we live in a time where so many of us feel unfulfilled, empty, stressed, and even shattered. We are overstimulated physically, underwhelmed spiritually, and challenged to connect Jewishly. But the restoration of the Afi Komen reminds us that we need not resign ourselves to this sorry state. Together, let's make a dot Ariel a center of spiritual restoration where we can challenge ourselves by reaching beyond ourselves, where we can find completeness and balance by coming to terms with our imperfections and limitations, and where our spirits can sing by harmonizing Judaism's timeless teachings with contemporary life, orchestrating a new song for our future. During the Seder, my kids chop at the middle matzah, sending its broken pieces flying everywhere. But we don't leave the table until the Afi Komen has been brought back, until we symbolically heal community splintering and spiritual brokenness. Today, as I am installed as your senior rabbi, together let us commit to returning the Afi Komen, to establishing a dot REL as a unique Jewish center where we reach out for the sake of the communal while reaching up for the sake of the spiritual. Together, let's honor our sacred history by recommitting ourselves to something new, innovative, and transformative. Today, let us build on close to 80 years of our history by establishing our synagogue as a holy laboratory for Jewish life, where community is nurtured, 
and the soul is nourished. Today, I begin my tenure as your rabbi, but this bold new vision can only be realized by all of us together. So today is really a day for all of us. At the Passover Seder, after the Avikomen has been restored, we open our doors for the blessings of Elijah's presence. Today, we begin the hard work in building for the future of our sacred community with confidence that we too will open our doors for the entire Jewish community for connection and spiritual sustenance. And like the presence of Elijah at a seder, that promises to be a magnificent blessing. Thank you all so very, very much. May God's face shine brightly upon you as you each strive for good. And may God grant you the greatest gift of all, the gift of peace, the gift of shalom, the gift of completeness, the gift of the spiritual renewal and the putting back together of all of the broken pieces. And let us say together, Amen. Amen.
and find the seats in his open seating. We will begin with the Hamosi with, with a few minutes. 